Welcome to part one of a two-part Factory Cat Mini Mag Auto Scrubber maintenance video. The goal of this video is to give you, the user, the information and knowledge needed to maintain the investment in your Factory Cat Mini Mag Auto Scrubber. Please refer to your Factory Cat Service Manual for more detailed maintenance information. The estimated time to complete this maintenance procedure will be between one and one and a half hours depending on the condition of your Factory Cat Mini Mag Auto Scrubber. The first step to the maintenance of your Mini Mag Auto Scrubber is to use the Mini Mag PM forms found in your Factory Cat Mini Mag manuals or download them from Factory Cat's website at www.factorycat.com. Power up your Mini Mag key switch and check that the LCD display is working properly as shown. Located to the left of the LCD display is a green button. This is the information button. Press it and record all of the hour meter information for the key meter, traction meter, scrub meter, and vacuum meter. Record accordingly. Next, check the operation panel from operator's left to the right as shown. Number one, check the reverse function toggle and speed control. Number two, check the two motion buttons for wear or damage. Check the speed control and check for proper forward motion. Third, check the blue solution control toggle for proper operation and solution flow. Once this is completed, check the black brush pressure toggle for proper operation and brush pressure control. Note that there will always be two bars showing on the LCD panel as demonstrated above. Next, check the brush deck switch for proper deck head lower and raising capability. Lastly, check the vacuum lever and vacuum switch that they are operating properly. The vacuum will have a delay for approximately 10 seconds when the vacuum is placed in the off position. When the vacuum is on, the LCD display will show the vacuum icon accordingly. Your next step is to check your solution recovery tank for any type of scratches or damage that could possibly cause leaks. This would be a sign of machine abuse. Check the front solution port and screen and port cover hinge to make sure that they are in proper working order as well. Next, check the inside of the recovery tank. Check the recovery tank latches for wear and damage. Then check the sight dome for damage to make sure that it is clean properly. Make sure that the sight dome lid, seals, and the lid beads are in good condition. Also check the sight dome chains that they are in good working order as well. At this point, it's important to check the drain saver basket to make sure that it is clean and in good working order. Also check the gray recovery hose for any type of damage or wear. Once these items are completed, replace them accordingly. Remove the float shutoff and make sure that the screens are free of dirt and corrosion and that the float ball is in good working order. 
Check the vacuum manifold and the black vac hose for any damage as shown. Once checked, replace the float shutoff securely. Note, when working with lead acid batteries, it is important to use proper protection that meets government codes in your country. This would include, but not be limited to, proper eye protection, hand and arm protection, as well as upper body protection. Make sure your batteries are fully charged before performing battery maintenance. At this point, open your recovery tank housing by releasing the two housing clips located on both sides of the solution tank. Make sure that these clips are in good working order as well. Once your solution tank is open, check your solution tank lanyard for any type of damage or wear, as demonstrated here. Next, check the battery box and batteries for any type of damage or acid spill. If acid is found on the battery box, drain it using the battery box drain hose located under the operator's left side of the machine. Discard of the acid properly. Your Minimag has 12 battery cells that need to be serviced for proper water levels. The water should be 1 8 of an inch above the top of the lead plates after charge and only serviced using distilled water. All battery terminals should be cleaned and free of corrosion. Check all battery cables if they are free of wear and damage and have proper terminal covers on all connections. And make sure that all the terminals are torqued to between 90 and 100 inch pounds. A specific gravity test should be conducted on all of your battery cells. As mentioned previously, your mini mag will have 12 cells on a properly charged battery, a reading of 1.260 or greater and a temperature of 80 degrees should be read per cell. Please refer to your service manual for more detailed information pertaining to this topic. When testing your battery cells, look at the battery solution clarity for haziness or particulate in the hydrometer itself. Any indication of this is the potentially damaged battery cell. When inspecting your battery charger, check the AC plug that it is in proper working condition. Also, pay close attention to the ground terminal that it is in good working condition as well. Also, check the red Anderson plug. Check that the Anderson terminals are not worn or damaged. Check the opposite Anderson plug located on the back of your mini bag. Check that this plug is in proper working condition as well. Note, if your machine has an onboard charger, it will not have this plug. It is important that your charger is an original equipment manufactured charger that is designed for your Minimax rubber. Check that your battery type switch is set to your type of battery pack. Before turning the charger on, always have the red DC charger plugged into the machine first, then turn the charger on accordingly. Doing so will eliminate any possibility of sparking. Proceed to video number two of the two-part Minimag maintenance video series.